Right, so I'm here to talk to you today about the power that we can all have to make either small changes, big changes, or even possibly with some loose change. So um, I'm an inventorpreneur. I've got multiple companies in the UK and, and, and around the world. Um, I didn't actually start my life doing what I do now. I started in a little fishing village in Liverpool called Bootle. Throughout my youth, I was always interested in the Scouts, interested in Duke of Edinburgh, interested in doing things that, that could possibly solve some problems. Um, and then I got into my working life. I was a, I was a pipe fitter welder. I was always interested in engineering. Um, from doing pipe fitting welding, I got interested in mechanical engineering. And then uh, I was working for big project management houses uh, building chemical plants, petrochemical plants, pharmaceutical. And I noticed that in one industry, they were using one solution, but they weren't using it in another industry, but they were using solutions that possibly could be used in, in completely different sectors, completely different industries. So I started to get invo involved and interested in my own um, chemical processes, uh, which is quite interesting, because I left school with three GCSEs and one of them being an F in chemistry. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so I, st I started up my own business while I was still working for one of the project management houses. We had a very good relationship. I was doing a business development role as well as bringing new work in for them and, and generating our own technologies. Um, and then my first job was doing an engineering project for someone who, who recycled auto catalysts from cars. Uh, so that was my first business, my first job. And unfortunately, they had some funding pulled from for the bank and the government, and they went into administration. It was like, oh, what am I going to do now? Um, but it actually made it into an opportunity. The administrators come in. There was half a million pounds worth of equipment for sale, and no one wanted to buy it. So we bought that for £15,000. We had a patent on it. Um, and I started to get really, really interested in patents and, and technology and different chemicals. So we actually, uh, with the business owner of that business, generated a fresh company, which done auto catalyst. Um, we got involved with, uh, with worldwide, worldwide recycling companies, and they asked us to develop new technologies for them, um, which is quite interesting. So I've invented things like the old big televisions. They, they have 20% lead in them. Invented the chemical process to dissolve the glass, dissolve the lead, recover the lead, and then you're left with, uh, with something called sodium silicate then, which led me on to my next problem and my next venture. So, what is sodium silicate? It's actually the fifth world's largest traded commodity. It goes into soap powder, it goes into washing up liquid, it goes into pretty much everything you see around you. But I couldn't use it for that because it had come from a hazardous waste. So I was thinking, what could I use it on? So uh, I thought, instead of making um, concrete out of uh, cement, sand and stone, I started to do some research and actually make, actually make it out of geopolymers. And one of them geopolymer part is actually sodium silicate. So I set up my own block company. Um, we set that up in 2010, and we make recycled giant concrete Lego blocks, uh, predominantly out of recycled materials. So we do 87% recycled at the moment, and then we're going to get by 2020 to 100% recycled. And we don't sort of stop there. So the new idea is for every block we make, we're going to plant a tree. So you can always try and do a little bit more. The metals recovery company is still going. Uh, we do things like x-ray film. So when you lift an x-ray film up and it's black, uh, all the black's actually silver. So we have a very quick chemical process over at University of Chester, Thornton Science Park, and it dissolves the silver off, silver off recovers the silver and recovers the plastic. Because what's happening? People are putting all this into containers, shifting it all over the world, it's getting burned. You're losing the plastic to get the silver. So there's always, always in that sort of solution mindset we do x-ray film, we also do printed circuit boards, so in every piece of technology is a printed circuit board. Currently at the moment, 95% of that is exported out of the UK with a value of four billion on it. Now, that's a pretty much big side of the economy. So why are we doing that when there's technologies on our doorstep? I'm always an opportunistic innovator, so whenever I see a problem, I think, how can I try and solve that? So coming on to my latest technology, I'd gone into, I'd just been the dentist actually, I'd come out of the dentist with my uh, with my wife and my youngest daughter, and we went into a high street coffee chain, and, uh, and I stood there, asked for a, a, a hot chocolate and a latte for my wife, um, and as I stood there, I watched the barista, it was quite, quite quiet, so me and me thinking brain, I'm, I'm watching a perform a barista operation, 
And, uh, and she goes to wipe the steam on with a, with a cloth that looks something similar to this. And I thought, that, that's absolutely disgusting. Uh, what? I sort of said, what are you doing, love? She said, I'm, I'm cleaning it. And I thought, wait there a minute, you don't look to be cleaning anything. So, uh, so that got me thinking. I'd asked her to make up a fresh cup with a fresh, clean cloth. So as I'm walking back to the table with my wife's latte, I thought, in my metals recovery, I use something called ultrasonics. Uh, ultrasonics works off a of power to a generator, to a transducer that produces a sound frequency about 30, 40,000 times a second that vibrates, and we use chemicals to then dissolve. So as I'm walking away with my wife's latte, I thought, I wonder whether anyone's ever made a portable ultrasonic cleaner. So I got home that night, standard sort of, put the kids to bed, two or three, four hours on the laptop. Has anyone made one? And no one had made a portable ultrasonic device. So I called my dad up the next morning and said, Dad, who's also a mechanical engineer, we need to, we need to get some ultrasonic tanks. We need to break them down and we need, to, we need to have a look if we can actually do this and does it work. So we spent the next sort of month um, in garages and in our own workshop and university and we, we actually put together a device that worked. Um, so. Over the last 12 months, I've been perfecting that device and, and I have 25 of them out in the marketplace working at the moment. So that leads me on to my next point, is that there are technologies out there, but not a lot of people know about them. And also, you've got to try and find investment and that in itself is quite hard. When we live in a world where there's thousands of tons of plastics in our oceans, there's thousands of tons of plastic going to landfill. There's all kinds of problems. All these cloths are all going into landfill. We have solutions out there. Just sometimes we have to research a little bit deeper. Um, so people are investing in things like cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency, you can't see it, you can't feel it, but people make quite a lot of money out of it. It also burns a massive amount of energy to produce and mine that cryptocurrency. So next time you're having to think about whether it be investment is, is there something else out there? Is there a clean tech? People like ourselves that sometimes need some help or need some investment to actually take our technology to the next level and, and bring it to the people. The point I'm trying to put over to yourselves, as this power is, we all possess a mobile phone. Most of us can talk or, or, or write on a customer satisfaction. If you're not happy with, say, for instance, food produce with single-use plastic, or you're not happy with coffee cloths, or you actually speak out, write a tweet about it, write a customer satisfaction survey, and actually give the big companies a problem to deal with. Because if you don't go into that shop anymore, if you don't buy that device or buy the thing that they're trying to sell anymore, then they don't, they don't exist as a company anymore. So put the responsibility back onto them. But that can only come from yourselves actually pushing past and giving them the problem back again.